you could slice that pie in many different ways. The, the, the situation that you provided was a woman out of pocket, Sweeney, mm -hmm. that didn't want to go with the game plan. The majority of those relationships are not broke or are not. They're not having division because a woman didn't choose to go with the game plan. It's a financial strain by, by an agreement that was made that wasn't held up. And the person decided if they were married, say biblical vows, Christian, they didn't want to stick it out. We can we can slice that pie right there, because for better or for worse, you're supposed to always stay in there, roll up your sleeves, and make it work. Period. There are other situations where the financial strain on one party was not what they signed up for, and they took a logical approach. I'm not going to keep bearing the burden of this weight. Um, I'm going to get myself out of this situation and do for me. Those are the two key factors from the, the, the bit of research that I did. Financial strain and uh, those that wanted to come up. Like, this is not what I signed up for. I was in it for the bag. As you see, some of the richest women in this world, they just wanted to get married to a man for 12 to 24 months. Say it didn't work. Irreconcilable differences is the term. And now they're living sky free with a with a big bank. And you can look at the list of how many women and the time frame that they stayed married till they departed that union and now they're up. A lot of ticket in the hole. So it's many different ways that you can slice it. But it's and hard that's to why, and that's why I was trying to come up with a, a, a fair way to come up with a common denominator that actually we can point to and like, yo. Everyone on this panel has experienced this and everybody in life is always experienced this same bullshit with black women. This is the problem. Like, I don't even know if we can do that. I don't know nah, if it's going to be unfair for doing it, but I, that's no, what I'm you're correct. It's truly, it's truly not a monolith as for describing that because it can go in many different ways. You can say financial, that's a big umbrella. I mean, it's just it, the person and values, in my opinion. I digress. But fellas, it, it 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 is though. You know what I'm saying? Like all all of the all of the key points that we acknowledge literally comes back to that person not being a team player, right? A lot of a lot of marriages, we, we see a lot of marriages fail primarily because of financial issues. At the same time, we see a lot of successful, very successful millionaire multi-billionaire men and women have multiple marriages because they got the bread to to get out of it you know what i'm saying there's no reason for them to stay in and i'll go give me some something else so i i think but, but what you're saying is because they had a billion because of a million it wasn't the money that they broke up with it was other things we're just it, looking at the people who had money and trying to discount oh just because you got money don't mean it's all easy under the sun well, no, I'm, I'm I'm saying there there is 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 easier for people. In my opinion, I, I think that it's easier for people with money to detect. Well, that, and yeah, and that was my original argument. My I wasn't right. trying to say that people with money are exempt from issues that average men go through. I was saying right. that when you have money and you are the sole provider, I've 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 rarely heard any issues being the reason for divorce or the reason for the relationship breaking with is because of money. Yeah, it's it's something else. It wasn't it wasn't the money. So I'm, that's why I'm I've kind of like strengthened a lot of my <laughs> arguments on being a, being able to provide finances to eliminate that even being an issue. There, there could right. be other issues that everybody normally go through, but finances ain't one of them. If you if you're a provider, you get what I'm saying. Right. But if you're a partner, yeah, we got that. Then you got all this cooperation and submission. Hey, look, I'm I'm carrying the same way. While I'm I'm not gonna just shut up. You got men at Oh, you should you should just traditional. You should just shut up just because I'm a man. But then they doing the same shit you doing, as far as carrying the weight at the house. Yeah, but what percentage of people are actually so, saying that? Hmm? Like, what percentage of men are actually saying that? Most men ain't out here saying that they women gotta shut the fuck up and 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 do what I say. <laughs> they. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, that's not most okay, men. So, okay, so 
I don't know what percentage it is. I don't even know if you can quantify that. I don't right. even know if there's any studies on that. I but mean, I, just I, think I about your own real men. life. When you go and talk to men, is they all, all the men, like just regular Joe men that you talk to sitting there saying, I want my woman barefoot and pregnant and shut the fuck up? Or you? I will say this. <laughs> I will say this. In the manner specifically, <laughs> whenever I listen to red pill content creators, I, I, I would say I hear it more often than not. I'm not trying to quantify it or try to have a, a, a social experiment, but I will say a lot of the real pill, red pill creators uh, kind of exploit the, the 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 traditional values of the. Uh, yeah, but also the, all of them think they millionaires, yeah, hey, hundred thousand theirs and watch. You should yeah. shut up whenever, even yeah. if we're partners and, and financially partners. But uh, yeah, they oh, all also, they all so, also have the same mentality. Uh, have that same. Uh, prescription though is get your money up so that you can make your woman shut the fuck up. They yeah, all still so. they that's a prescription of that is the same as yours is don't make money an issue. Make sure you control the money because then if you control the money, you control the woman. That's also a part of their talking point. Well, so, I never we said I so. never said anything about you make more money, you control a woman. My argument is if you if you're a provider and you're in it and it, the roles are traditional. Then you eliminate finances being an issue for the divorce, which is, I think, I'm not going to even say it's the number one issue. I think somebody argued months ago that it was infidelity. But right. I would I would say the more things you check off as a man, traditional, it kind of eliminate those issues that come into modern relationships. Well, so, it may eliminate the need for money as finances, uh, as far as as far as not being an issue, but finance could still be an issue because then she could say, you could find yourself in a situation where she says you're financially controlling. You're financial abuse. Or financially abusive. And, or yeah. financial infidelity. So, of, I heard yeah. about by yeah, that's the thing to it. You could and yeah. that'll come up in a discovery and you'll be paying for it. But check it out, gentlemen. Um, player nine has entered the room. I do want to introduce Smiley Jizzle. Is, Jizzle. That, is that right? For yeah, Jizzle, right? Yeah, Smiley right? yeah. Sm Jizzle. Smiley Jizzle, right? All right, what's happening, partner? If, um, for those of you who may not be familiar with Smiley Jizzle, uh, you could go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, how you doing? This is straight. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Um, yeah, how you doing? Um, Smiley Jizzle. I'm a a creator and influencer as well. We have a a, a podcast, whatever, and I watch the people all the time. I enjoy these conversations with you guys when you guys are up here and giving um, some gems to a lot of the young men. They definitely need it. I know they're on the internet all the time, so this is definitely content that I prescribe to and I definitely recommend to other people. Okay. So I appreciate this. Um, but um, it's not about me. Like I really like what we what you guys are talking about right now because we were having a discussion earlier similar to what you guys were talking about and I feel like right now the dating pool sucks. Like it, it, it really sucks for men. And it's like, you want to just do what you're supposed to do as a man, like, you know, uh, start your businesses or get whatever trade you need to get or whatever mentorships you need to get your businesses started and all that stuff. But you still want that companionship. You know what I mean? And right now, like a lot of women are like, they're acting like men. You know what I mean? So it's it's making it even more challenging for for men to navigate in, you know, this this uh, diaspora or whatever we call it of um, this dating pool that's like messed up. You know what I mean? All over the place. And I don't have any children or whatever, but I was in a relationship for a long time. So when I hear all this stuff about the red pill and all that, it 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 sounds a little crazy. For, for me because it wasn't hard for us to find women growing up. Like it wasn't like difficult for us. Like, you know what I mean? They were out there, they were around the internet just kind of like messed everything up. So now you got these guys that are like saying like, Oh, you know, you, you can't have a woman that's, that that's going to talk to you this kind of way. And no woman shut up. I, no woman shuts up ever. They they all they all run their mouth and and as men we learn to adapt to it and understand that okay women are gonna behave this way and men we have to understand that they behave this way so we have to behave this way and deal with it we can't change them you know what I mean we we just can't it's just it's just the way that they are you know what I mean? so 
one thing that I always tell dudes, right? I think I, I bet to differ on that last point. On only the last point, you made a lot of good points earlier, but the last point, some women do shut up, man. I'll say that for real, bro. Like, um, <laughs> I, I'll say that for real. There are some women who just, you know, they like follow whatever it is that you say. Um, not as many on the west side of the globe. We dig it. That's an absolute fact. It's not an opinion. Like, there's nobody who could prove different. So we we do know that, but the the best thing that you can do for to have a to at least attempt to have a successful relationship right there's no way you can eliminate that but to at least mitigate the risk to to increase the all likelihood that you would have a fulfilling long-term relationship in my opinion uh is to find what type of women are attracted to you Right. You have to get with women who are really into you. Uh, there's a great clip that Mormon Friedman had and said, don't chase women. You don't. I, don't. I didn't even agree with the last part he said where he said, oh, yeah, you tell her how beautiful she is. No, 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 forget. Don't tell her how beautiful she is. Listen, and I'm not saying never, but she has to earn that validation. I'm not going to go on your social media and start liking your pictures. I'm not going to go in like some of the gentlemen were saying earlier. You got to kill those points, man. Like, do not validate women for no reason. They don't deserve it for no reason. If I see a woman doing something virtuous, I validate that for no reason because it's like, okay, you said something that's good. You were actually voicing an opinion that could actually uh, is for the betterment of men, for the betterment of families, right? That's different. You reward that. But a woman, just because she got the tatas out or she cute or whatever, <laughs> the hell with any of that, man. You And you got to pay attention to how a woman feels about you. It's uh, It's extremely important to start to pick up on those social cues. You need to be able to read rooms. You need to be able to understand body language. When these women are talking to you, you have to understand what it is that they mean. Because a lot of people say there's a right way and a wrong way to approach a woman. There really isn't as long as you're respectful, right? And sometimes you could be disrespectful if a woman is into you that much. If a woman like you, we could go say the same exact line, all eight of us on this panel right now. And we're going to get eight different responses from the same exact woman because of how much or how little we are her type mm. rules. Thanks. And you hear a lot of men say this Thanks. rules, rules are for the, the men that women don't want. If a woman's into you, you're going to be good. That's the main thing. Just look for women. You have to find out what type of women you attract. And if you are not, you don't like the results you're getting, then you must improve. You got to do better at it. And that's why Darwin will say, go ahead. Um, and get your weight up. The more boxes you check, the bigger your pool. Because if you, let's say, you can't do anything about being tall, but if you have money, right? And I never say lead with money. That's a horrible idea. However, right. if you have more money, then you have access to a larger pool of women. If you have charisma, you have access to a larger pool of women. If you have game, right? You know how to dress. You wear clothes that flatter your body you're going to have access to a larger pool of women. And just by, if, if we're going to do this logically, if we're going to just, just really reel this out, we're going to talk about the numbers, right? If you have more candidates, the odds of you finding a suitable candidate are obviously greater. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to be attractive to most candidates or as many as you possibly can. You, do, you just control whatever you can control. And then you'll you'll at least end up with the best mate that you can. I find it strange that we got to this point, right? Because mm -hmm. we all know that prostitutes have existed since the beginning of the time. Sex oh, houses, brothels. <laughs> uh, we know all this shit existed to, since the beginning of time. We done had we done went through uh the what was it called? The sports illustrated magazines, Playboy magazines. The goddamn um, Vicky Secret magazines and everything. We done been through Russell, all of that. Black Russell, what I'm does it about, say? Yeah, can't forget about BT. <laughs> what does it say about today's woman when we literally are saying that you have to ignore <laughs> the thing that's been around since the, it's the oldest profession on the planet? And we said, damn, man, it got so bad. Now you got to ignore the prostitutes. <laughs> well, listen.
Well, it's, it's never been the point where it was socially acceptable for the average woman to be that. Women did that on the low. It was never in your face. It was never in your children's face. It was in the back alleys, the back seat of cars, and in those rooms, in those brothels. Now they got it in the street. They got it in the social media for your children to see. And everybody feels like they can do it, and it's okay, and it's supposed to be socially acceptable, and the shame is gone. That's yeah. not okay. Yeah, it's crazy how far yeah. we've gone. To where you, where we literally, like, to where we are today, that speaks volumes, man. Yeah, I, but think about <laughs> it. Those women knew what they were, right? And they did what they did. They didn't try to live a double life like they are right now. Not like, not as rampant as it is. They expect us to accept it. Like, <laughs> oh, no, I do this for money. And it's okay because I'm being compensated for it. It has nothing to do with my real body count. Like, you hear them try to disconnect the two. They try to separate them like it's a different category. Man, it doesn't keep, really work keep, like that. To keep it a buck, though, it, all, all of that is really our fault as men. You know what I'm saying? Just, just like you said, that, that's that's always been a thing. But the, the thing is, is that we went to a certain and specific location for it. But now that we made it so easily accessible as men, I, I will say that it is our fault overall for even okay and, and validating it you know what i'm saying to to be the norm in the public yeah because we, we we can't we can't just dismiss our playing it for we sure. also have to understand that inflation has made that type of relationship even more attractive um you know the, the ability to get that obtain a lifestyle you usually could for a lower amount of money a low amount of expenses. So now you got these this thing called situationships, where everything is completely transactional. You get what I'm saying? So it's not just women. And, and again, it's, it's, it's touching on points, but the points that we're kind of touching on is not really solution-focused on the original topic, I would say. I get what uh, Smith, Smiley Jizzle was saying about uh, women are going to argue. I think that's touching on some of the double standards that we kind of went over a couple shows ago. There's going to be double standards. Women are going to argue and women, women are going to not, not shut up and, 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 and bite back sometimes. But I don't think that's the salute. I don't think that's that point. Those points are pointing to what we're trying to find as a solution to the specific topic of women being undateable. Because if that were the case, then when we say women would uh, women arguing and being combative is the number one issue. But y'all said it was, did we even agree that it was finances? No, because I don't no. even. That's what I'm saying. Like I and I and I, and I, and I kind of with Kenny. There's no way to really point at something. But you would think you would think because, you would not think be because all of us date black women, we should be able to do it. But yeah, we. I think we all pretty much agree that it's it's them not being cooperative. Yeah, it's both sides. Yeah, the, will, the unwillingness, the the unwillingness. No, the unwillingness. You, to you be could say infidelity is not being cooperative. Uh, stepping outside yeah. of relationship is, is not. Being you can I, say I, anything I, that doesn't align with what you originally wanted to do can be not cooperative. So it's it's really taking a shortcut or, or you know, taking well, the shortest path. Uh, I, I, I think that is more, as, as not cooperative. Well, I no, it's more that, so that, the, the it's, societal it's, expectation. I, I think that is more so the societal expectation of what a man should do in a marriage and what a woman should do in a marriage. And once you remove those values and the and the the importance that both roles play as team players, if if one person is lacking then the marriage is going to fail in some type of way, shape, and manner. You know what I'm saying? On top of whoever deciding to be uncooperative and deciding to not be a team player. Those those are always going to be the underlying issues because life for everybody is going to do this. But marriage is going to do the same exact fucking thing. So, 